Hello, I'm Joanna Summerscales from the ET Newsroom, also known as ETN. And the ET Newsroom was formerly known as the Amash Project. And that started out in 2011, where I essentially was giving experiences, those who've had experience of off-worlders, other intelligences, and they've had encounters, a platform. So I am known, I guess, for talking to people about their experiences, helping them to come to terms with it as much as I can. I'm not an experiencer myself of exact contact in that direction, but I do make films and documentaries with those experiences in mind. And I have also written a book with Bill Brooks about his incredible experience in the UK. So you can find me at the ET newsroom at gmail.com. And if you want to ring in, and tell me about your experience or arrange a meetup to have a chat over Skype or Zoom, the mobile is 0795 1752813. And the website, which is still under construction, is theetnewsroom.com. And you want to look out for the Eclectia album, a project I finished in 2018, but is still ongoing. And I hope we're going to have a documentary from that. And that is an album filled with the wonderful work of experiences. And you can find that at all the W's at the etnewsroom.wixsite.com forward slash Ecolectia with a K release. And now, today, I'm going to be reading a piece written by Simon Laurie King from the Slick podcast. And it's called Here Be Dragons. The sea pig wandered aimlessly through the Straits of Gibraltar, where once upon a time she'd seen the pillars of Hercules standing proudly in that so long ago forgotten age. She sighed and swam on, even more down in the dumps than she had been before. She paused her swim and floated just inches from the surface and listened to the ugly noises of industry and overpopulation. She thought back nostalgically and to that happy ancient music that once drifted serenely from those same shores carried upon the incense smoke of the human shrines dedicated to her kind. Her age was far longer than even her living memory could comprehend accurately. Certainly, before the continents had broken apart and had formed the great islands, of that there was no doubt. That particular memory was like yesterday to her. The sea pig's parents, when she could be bothered to swim into the deepest parts of the abyss to find them, reminded her constantly of the journey to this system aboard a great ark that still orbits all the great oceans to this day, shining in the night sky. A reminder of our roots, the sea pig chuckled to herself as she heard her mother's whistling calls within her heart repeating that very sentiment. Sadly though, she and her parents were the last of their kind, Seventeen others had faced their demise, ranging from natural disasters, becoming landlocked in inland lakes or seas due to the shifting of the continents, others to human undersea nuclear testing during an unfortunately timed mating ritual. At least two others had been caught by pure chance by the ancient whalers of this world. As a consequence of this action, for hundreds of years to follow, were then depicted on maps at sea monsters with dire warnings of here be dragons. How would the sea pig know of this? I've no idea, but she does seemingly. 
She knows her oceans are polluted. She knows the creatures on the shore no longer care for their habitat or the great waters that divide them. She also knows that one day the ark will awaken and herald that great return. <laughs>